Oh, path to fill. Thanks, guys. How's everyone doing this morning? Happy Remembrance Sunday. Anyone else? Poppy fell off a couple of times. Mine did. But I didn't stab myself this year, so it's all good. So I'm five weeks in, I think. Yeah, week five into the smartphone series. It doesn't matter if it's your first time here, welcome, or if you've missed the last couple of weeks. Every independent week of this series is an independent message. But we've been looking at so far we've explored how smartphones can help us think about spiritual concepts. And sometimes it's a, a, a bit of a stretch to get there, but we talked about how we need to sometimes disconnect to reconnect to God. We've talked about um, being hacked and guarding our heart. We've also talked about, uh, last week I think it was, living unfiltered before God. Um, so I'm going to dive in in a minute. But the smartphones, who, who spends too much time on their smartphone? Come on, hand. Look. See, some of you, don't, you're not hands up people, but I can tell by your face. You're like, yes. I think most of us spend far too much time on our smartphone. But let's face it, modern life is amazing. Like, all the, mo like, I just think back, even to my, my childhood, like, all the tech that's been invented and everything that's so easy now, modern life is amazing. And there's some, there's some downsides to it that we'll get into in, in future weeks. But if you think about it, if you could go back in time, if you had a time machine, if you got in a DeLorean, and you went back in time to, like, biblical times, you know, where just staying alive was hard work. Because it was. Just being alive, just getting enough food, just getting clean water, just staying alive was hard. And this tech stuff we have now makes our life so easy. It has lots of downsides, but it makes it so easy. I imagine people from biblical times, if they can look forward or have a conversation, you explain the things that you have that do all the things that they do, they'd think, you're living the dream. They would. They'd be like, that's like, that's like almost heaven. I'd imagine. They'd be like, oh, like you don't, like, you've got an obesity problem in most of the way. There's too much food. What? <laughs> you've got devices where you can speak across the planet. Wow. Like, it'd be like, you're living the dream. And perhaps you are now. Perhaps you are today living the dream. And you're there. And you're thinking, I am actually living the dream. Some of us are a little way off. And uh, I spoke to someone this morning about this, but my living the dream, I've shared some of your dr my dreams with you in, in the past. If you've been in, in church for many years, some of my dream, one of my dreams was to have my mortgage paid off. That's a dream in the long distance that I'm, I'm hoping for, I'm leading towards. Who, who's, who's, is that anyone's dream, part of their little mini bit of dream, is have it being debt free. Oh, that sounds so nice. Just them words, sounds nice. Debt free. But I want to own a house as well. So <laughs> that's part of my dream my, where I'm... I'm Heading towards, you know, this is a real first world problem. I want a holiday every year in Florida. That's what I want. That's the dream. Holiday Instead of every two or two and a half or three years, what a first world problem that is. I only get to go to Florida every three years. But that would be the dream, being able to go on a family holiday every year. That would be great. And I mentioned to someone this morning as well about having a Volvo XC90. I'd love, uh, that's my dream car, Volvo XC90. There's a bit of an in-joke in our church. I, uh, I talked about it. I really want one. And then like three or four people in my connect group all appeared with XC90s. And I was just like, and then last week I was outside the foyer with Dave, weren't I? And a new, mem a new member in the church pulled up in one. And I was like, do not envy, do not envy, do not envy. <laughs> Maybe one day. My last one is that I can eat any amount of food I want and not put on weight. That's living the dream. <laughs> that's, my dream. <laughs> that's, that's, that's my dream. That's my dream. Love dream girls. We often, though, we frame our life around striving to be living the dream. We've got a lot of Americans in here. You know, that pursuit of happiness, that almost that living the dream mentality. That's what we aim for. We strive to live the dream, to be living the dream. But I think Jesus wants us to be more interested in living the meme. See what I've done there? It's very, I love a good rhyme. More interested in living the meme. And some of you older generation in here, you'll be looking at that and think, what has that got to do with the word meme? Some of you Dawkins fans, don't worry, we'll get into it. But living the meme, I think Jesus is more interested in us living the meme. There's hundreds of them, of them there. Some of you will probably have to pick out some of your favorites that you've got shared online and maybe you share them daily. But I think Jesus is more interested in us 
pursuing and striving to live the meme instead of living the dream. And I want to introduce this question today is what is the meme of your life? What is that? It's just a picture that could have so many little phrases next to it. But what is the meme of your life? What is the meme of your life? And the modern usage of the word meme today means often it's usually a humorous picture that has, or a video that has a, a little sentence with it usually that, that spreads rapidly online. That's what a meme is. You know, it, it influences perceptions, it changes attitudes, and it, it often, if, if done well and done over a long period of time, it often shapes culture. So meme, the modern version of this is, is something that goes out there that spreads, usually through picture or video and a bit of text, that actually shapes the culture. Where, if you're like me, and I had a, a, biology, a background in human biology, but the background of the word, the word uh, meme, most of you know, I, I'd imagine, was coined by Richard Dawkins in the 1970s. The term meme originally described how ideas that we might have in the human race, and not just humans, but in animals as well, and behaviours uh, and styles and all that sort of thing are passed down culturally through generations and spread sideways as well. They're, they're the thing, the ideas, the, the, the different things that we push out into culture, they're the things that we were called memes. Um, much like genetic information, it comes from the word gene. Some of you might not know that. It's like a, a copy of the word gene. It's like genes and memes. Two different ways of spreading stuff. Through genetics, through having a baby and they've got half of your information in them. Spreading it through genes or you spread it through memes. Two different ways of spreading information, if you like. And so like, I, I'd like a good definition. So I've got the actual definition up here for you. But a meme, an element of a culture or system of behaviour that's passed from one individual to another, and sometimes that goes down in generations as well, by imitation. You're, you're copying the person. Sometimes not on purpose, sometimes on purpose, but you're copying the person. Or any other non-genetic means. So by doing it by not genetics, not by having babies and, and that information being passed on. And so the big question for us, I suppose, to reflect upon is what messages, values, or ideals are we spreading in our lives? What is the meme of your life? What are you spreading? What ideas? What attitudes? What behaviors? What styles are you passing from one individual to the next? Who's imitating you and what are they imitating? You know, do we spread mostly silly internet memes? Some of you love all that stuff. Do it on a daily basis? Do you spread silly internet memes? Or do you spread memes that matter? Do you spread memes that matter? You know, a, an example of a meme would be like even the poppy could be an expression of a meme. Or even Remembrance Sunday as a concept is a meme that's passed down from generation to generation. Lest we forget. It's like we don't want to forget this. We want to make sure we remember this and we're going to pass it down. We need to spread this information out. It's a meme. When we look at the Old Testament story, when God told Abraham, I will make you a great nation, you read in Genesis 12. He said to Abraham, I'm going to make you a great nation. And, and through Abraham, it says that all nations will be blessed. You know, and it later talks about Abraham's faith in Scripture. It's like this big thing of his faith. That's not, and that's not his genetic line, although it included it. It went far wider than that. Like the whole world is influenced by Abraham's faith. It became a lasting legacy. For, genera for generations, something to imitate. The Bible often says, look at that person's faith. Look at that person. Remind you of that, that meme, that information from the past being brought forward. Abraham set a model for walking in obedience to God. It's not, it wasn't just genetic. It wasn't just his kids, although it was all that. It was everyone that came and, and interacted and, and touched shoulders and imitated that. It was through the mimetic procedure, not the genetic. That's how it spread. Uses both, but. But my point, our lives, your life, my life, similarly, can become sources of blessing or stumbling block, it doesn't matter, that we pass on. What we pass on matters. So what memes are you passing off? What is the meme of your life? Or what are the memes of your life? Because you'll have hundreds. 
you know, I think as members of his church, not this church, but Jesus' church, our lives should reflect Jesus' character. I think they should. Our life independently, but as a collective as well, should reflect the character of Christ so others see him through us. You know, it's just the same as you sharing an internet meme. You sharing an internet meme goes from one person to the next, and the same when we share Christ's character, it goes from one person to the next. When you... Have we, let's, let's, I like a nice server. Who posts quite a bit on, in, on the internet? Got a few posts. Yeah, a few people. Reluctantly, right? I do. Yeah, admitting it. Because most people don't post a lot. There's a few people who part, post a lot. Most of you are like me, who don't post anything. I forget I have social media accounts. Someone's been inviting me to be their friend for a few years. They hate me now. I don't even know they want to be my friend. <laughs> But it's the same when you, when you post, because I don't, but when you post a meme, someone else sees it, and then they go, oh, that's funny, and it's usually funny things, and they repost it. It's imitation. It's like saying, I wanna, I'm copying you, and I'm passing that on. And it's the same as what we can do with our, our life. We can imitate Christ. We can post about Christ, I'm not saying you have to do that on your social media, but people can see that and imitate it and it can spread like a meme. And Paul urged the Corinthian believers, when you read in Scripture in, in, in Corinthians, I think it's 1 Corinthians 11, he says, follow my example. This is what Paul said, the Apostle Paul said, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. That's what he said, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. He didn't say, follow, just copy me, I'm brilliant although he was in many ways, he said, follow me in, in as much as that I follow the example of Christ. Christ is the original post. It's like, da-da, the funny meme. And Paul was copying that, and he was passing it on to the Corinthian church, saying, copy me, but only in regard to the way that I copy Christ. This is the meme. I'm, I'm transferring information about Jesus, about Christ, about his life, about what he taught, and I'm passing it on to you. Copy them things, he says. Follow me, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. It's a meme. That's what it is. It's a passing of information across the generations, across the world. What Paul was saying was spread the meme. That's what he's saying. Spread it. We've got it. We've got the original post. It's brilliant. It's well funny. It's like the best thing that ever happened. It's like the best internet meme ever. <laughs> and he's saying, let's copy it and copy me. I'm, I'm the person in the middle. I'm retweeting. I'm reposting. Now you do the same. <laughs> you see, Paul served as a mentor to Timothy, we, write, we find that in Scripture. A younger guy. And he passed down spiritual wisdom. That's, they're memes. They're, they're just memes. He passed down spiritual wisdom to the next generation of, for loving, for script, a love of Scripture and the text and a commitment to truth, all these things that were important to Paul that he, he learned from, from Christ and he passed on to Timothy. And then Timothy became a pastor and leader and influenced so many other people in the region, as did Paul. But in other words, the meme went viral. That meme of, of the story of Christ went viral across that region. And it would have probably spread even quicker if it had the internet like we have today. But it spread incredibly quickly. And I think in so many regards, the church across the generations has got the benefit of witnessing effectively godly patterns in action. I'm glad that when I was younger and, and, and not even a Christian, I had behaviors displayed to me that I could imitate, that I could copy effectively. And the church across the generations has had that benefit of witnessing godly patterns in action in the people who've gone before them, seeing godly men and women imitating behaviors that Christ displayed. And whether that's through seeing it and gone down the family line and just copying or through text and redoing it, but imitating behaviors that Christ displayed, whether that's being loving or whether that's being forgiving, whether that's showing compassion, whether that's wisdom, there's a whole list of memes that have been passed down through the church, originating from God. You know, and we're so fortunate as the church in today's society. We have been, I don't know, we've inherited them things and we've been shown the way. Let's be clear though, imperfectly. Like we can't even do a perfect job going forward. 
and the people who showed me the way beforehand, very imperfect in many regards. But we've been shown the way <laughs> so that we can carry the same memes. So we can take what God told us, what Jesus lived for, and take them into the future. So that those around us and those that come after us can then imitate us. So that <laughs> people can imitate us. And so I want to ask you a question. It's where I'm heading is, are we living in ways worth imitating? Because Paul, Paul told, he, he encouraged the Corinthian church, imitate me, follow me, copy me, in as much that I'm copying Christ. And, and I think this is what God wants for our life, is that other people copy us, imitate us, but only in as much as we're imitating Christ. So are <laughs> we living in ways that are worth imitating. And I mean from the broadest concepts down to the narrowest, which we'll come to in a minute. But are we living in ways that are worth imitating? If everyone imitated you, would the world be better? You know, some people might think that those thousands of silly memes that we see on the internet. Can you the, put the uh, title picture up, the one with the, the million memes? Some may think that all these silly memes, the funny ones, the stupid ones, and the rude ones that we see on the internet do not matter. Like I said earlier, memes that matter. Some people think these don't matter. They just sit like, if you, especially if you're a bit older like me and not really techy. I'm like, that what does that matter? It doesn't make any difference. Some of you might think these sort of things have no power <laughs> and don't do anything. They're meaningless. Just like, but you'd be wrong. They shape culture. They do, even if you don't like it. They shape culture, and it's, and it's only going to be more powerful going forward. That's why when you're a bit older, and especially if you're sort of not in the world, if you like, very much, you can look out and not understand anything that's going on, especially with young people. I don't even understand the words my son uses. Because the memes that have been passed on have been passed on to him, not to me. <laughs> but these memes, as silly as some of them are, are powerful. They shape culture, and so they shape the world. They shape little cultures, and because we're all connected like we talked about in the first week, they actually shape the world. And what they do, this is the danger. I'm not against doing this sort of thing. I like a good funny thing that's shared. It's great. Brilliant. I just don't do it. But the danger is it's so saturating that it pushes other memes out. You know, if you've got things that go viral, it means that other things don't get seen. If there's a big news story about something that really doesn't matter, it just saturates the news market that you don't find out about this really important thing that could have changed the world, like the cure for cancer, but because some minor celebrity said something on Facebook, you know, it's just saturated in that way. And these memes take up the space, just like genetics, like genes fight for survival, memes fight for survival. They want to replicate, they want to pass on, although they don't actually have their own little mind. But it, that is effectively how it works. They push other memes out. Just as genes fight to reproduce, so do memes. So it matters what the memes of your life are. It matters what the memes in our culture are. You know, just like the small actions of one meme, one little post that someone does that nobody knows about, can spark a global reaction. That's how people get mega famous often. Sometimes it's from years and years of hard work and being talented, and, but other times it's just they post something that catches on and everyone goes, ah, and repost, and suddenly this person, this thing, this whole thing, this, one of these famous memes is massive and has massive cultural power. Just from one little post, maybe three or four little words in a funny picture, these little things have power. And they can spark global reactions. And, the, and in the same way in our little life, if you like, our daily little choices, our little attitudes and behaviours influence our life and the people we interact with. And in the short to long term, they actually shape our entire world. Everything you're giving off, every meme that you're copying and pasting in your world, all your behaviours, attitudes, words, all them things, actually, and we don't feel it sometimes, but they actually shape our entire life and they shape our culture and when many people do that together, shape the world. That's what happened with the church. More and more people were following Christ and it just shaped the entire world. 
That's why it matters. <laughs> and that's why it matters what memes you choose to carry and propagate and spread. It matters what, how you live as a follower of Christ. When you think about the story in the Old Testament of Joshua publicly declaring, I think it's Joshua 24, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Like this saying, like almost like a mantra of the house. Some of you have like, actually we have one, we have like these Disney stickers, in this house we do, I don't even know what they are, Steph put them up there, but apparently they're a mantra. <laughs> but many of you have a, a, a meme by which you live by in your family, or maybe you have a handful or a few but Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. The, the meme of this house is service to God. This is what we're about. This is what I'm telling my children. This is what our household does. Me as the dad, I'm telling you, this is the meme we're spreading. Anything that doesn't fit with that, that can clear off. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And this statement shows the importance of taking a stand, being, being proactive in the memes that you're, that you're giving off, especially to your family, but to the wider community. But taking a stand for, for faith within one's own family, setting a clear example or, or commitment to God. And, and so I want to ask, and maybe you're single in here and don't have a, a family in that direction, but what values are you establishing in your family? What values are you establishing? What things are you doing? Because they're going to be a meme. <laughs> they're going to be picked up and they're going to be taken into future generations. Are you displaying godly memes? for your children, for your family to imitate. <laughs> you see, some of the things my boys in the pod, he's with the youth today, some of the things my son, some of his behaviours and attitudes and things that I think, that is disgusting. And then I zoom in a bit more and I'm like, I think he learned that from me. <laughs> Many of the things that we can see in others we don't see in ourselves, but... It matters what I pass on down the generation. Some of the things that we think are unseen. Really what I'm heading towards is this question. Is Jesus the meme of your life? Or should I say, is Jesus the primary meme of your life? Because we can have hundreds of things that we, that we put out there. But is Jesus the meme of your life? Is he the primary meme of our lives? Because ultimately the meme that should define our lives as followers of Jesus is Jesus himself. His actions, his teaching, his sacrificial love should be an imprint that we leave on those around us. Even if we don't use very specific words sometimes. That them actions, them characteristics of Christ would just be like footprints everywhere that we go that we touch. You know, when you think of Moses in the Old Testament, when he came, came down from Mount Sinai after being face-to-face -face from God, and he had the best tan going on, says in Scripture, he was glowing. Been like on a sunbed, been to Florida, had all the spray on. Just the face, though, he didn't bother with the rest. <laughs> didn't do the legs. But he came down and was glowing from being in God's presence. And, like, and other people could see Everyone's like, what's going on? Where's he been? He's been in Tenerife. Because he glowed. It was like the presence of God was just reflecting off of him. He carried the, sorry, he carried the, the visible legacy of his encounters with God. And it impacted the entire nation. People were then like, ah, they took him serious now. Ah, you're, you're glowing. Like, if someone's glowing, take him seriously. But he impacted that entire nation of Israel. They could see that he had an interaction with God. Can people see that you've had an interaction with Christ? Through the memes that come out of your life, can people see that you've had an interaction with Jesus? Because I think being in God's presence, you know, accepting Christ into our life, living with the Holy Spirit inside of us, changes us in a way that others can see. Others can see, can notice. And I grew up in a, a very atheist household. I remember I was at university when I, when I actually came to believe in God. I went from atheist to agnostic to Christian very quickly <laughs> in, a, in a matter of months. And thankfully, and it bodes well, it, like, people noticed in my world. That's good. I didn't tell them because I was a bit ashamed of going to church, if I'm being really honest. 
I was like, I might get beaten up now. <laughs> but like people know, it's like, why aren't you doing that anymore? You're, you're not doing this anymore. And I'm not saying, talking about a list of rules that I wasn't allowed to do. Now the church was telling me what to do. Nothing like that. Just an encounter with Christ that changed the memes that I was then starting to spread. Not necessarily even on purpose, but being changed from the inside, being renewed, moving from one degree of glory to the next, becoming more and more like Christ. I'm still a way off, but I'm hopefully heading in the right direction. Are we so close to Jesus that our, our lives reflect him? Unmistakably, that their memes are being thrown out in every element. It's like you're posting Jesus with every minute. I'm not talking about on your phone, but I mean with your life. That every interaction is like you posting about Jesus himself. I'm sure some of you got a favorite meme that you have on the internet, but perhaps the greatest meme ever, and I don't mean from one of the hundred on the screen, is probably the Great Commission. It's probably Jesus' final meme, if you like, the final thing to He taught lots of things that would pass on, but the greatest one, perhaps, the one that had the most power, that spread the most because of the nature of it, was the, the, the Great Commission. You see, before ascending to heaven, Jesus told his disciples, go therefore, go out, not just stay in, because it's really hard to spread, go out therefore and make disciples of all nations. This, this meme has been passed down to the, to the today even that we read it in scripture, which is great, we've got the printed press, you've got it in, in your hand, you've now got it on your phone. All of us can read Matthew 28, 19 saying, therefore go and make disciples of all nations. We've got that meme, probably the greatest meme, and Jesus' final meme. But my point is, Jesus' influence in us should be so profound. It spreads naturally. And some of us might want to be more proactive than others. Some of us might use a particular language. And... But Jesus' influence on us, taking that meme seriously that, he, that he's spread down the generations of going and <laughs> making disciples of all nations, that's influenced us so much that we've taken that, we've imitated that. And it spreads naturally out of us to others. You see, I think if Jesus is the meme of our lives, others will notice and be drawn to him. And uh, don't get me wrong, <laughs> we live in a culture that's very anti-Christian. So I get, you can live the perfect Jesus meme spread in life and maybe nearly most people will reject everything about it. You know, the, the path is narrow. We understand that. But we're called to, to spread memes out far wide. Many will reject, but if Jesus is the meme of our life, then others will notice and be drawn to him. But the only way for them to pick up that meme themselves is for someone to show them. It's for someone to actually post it. To demonstrate it, to show, how can your, you know, perhaps you, you would never ever think about sharing Jesus in any regard in your workplace, but if, if no one will share it in a workplace, then how will anyone in that workplace ever pick up the meme that is Jesus? <laughs> no meme spreads without someone sharing it first. It's true, like, it, it, it can't happen. It just makes sense, doesn't it? You, a meme won't spread, a virus won't spread if it doesn't interact with anything else in its, in its world. And the same with the, the memes that we've got from Christ. Unless we put them out there, unless we post them in, in whatever way the Holy Spirit lead, leads you to do, but unless we post them, no one's going to pick them up, no one's going to see them, no one's going to embrace them, take them on, or even then perhaps repost them, which is what we're aiming for, perhaps. And maybe... You, Maybe you feel like I used to a long time ago, but I don't feel comfortable sharing about Christ in any regard. I find it really weird. And I understand it. Believe me, I understand that with my background. I feel really weird and uncomfortable. I'm not good at it. I don't know how to go about it. I don't feel very comfortable. I don't. Me. Me. You know what I hear? Me. <laughs> me. Me. And perhaps you need to take the me out of the meme you take the me out of the meme. The trouble is, though, some of you are good with language. If you take the me out of meme, 
you end up with me still, so it doesn't work very well. It's not a very good point. But the principle stands that you should take the me out of the meme, the meme that we're supposed to be spreading. Perhaps we should take the way we feel about it out of the equation. You see, the meme of our life should be less about me and more about Jesus. It should be less about me. We're in it. We're, we're part of the passing on process, and it's important. But perhaps the content of the meme we're trying to spread should be less about me and more about Jesus. You are just the messenger. He is the message. You're just the messenger. Matt done an amazing uh, message at uh, um, the men's uh, conference elemental about legacy. And, and we, we want to build legacy in our life and pass on stuff down the generations. And, and all that stuff's fine, but... He honed in on the fact that really what we should be aiming for is passing on the legacy of Jesus. So sure, perhaps you want to strive to live the dream, but Jesus would encourage us more to live the meme. We might focus our whole life aiming to live the dream, but, but Jesus, I think, would encourage us more to live the meme. Live the meme. Perhaps we need to move more from living the dream to living the meme. Maybe I need to move closer in that direction. Instead of striving to live in the dream, is that I'd actually take on the responsibility of living the meme. You see, my actual, I shared with you my living the dream scenario. And all being debt-free, going to Florida, having an XC night is all, all fantastic stuff and, and great. My actual living the dream, if, I'm, if I dig down deeper to non-superficial stuff, is actually to effectively live the meme. That's my dream, is to actually effectively live the meme so that it passes on, that I effectively live the meme that is Jesus and that I pass it on to our community, to generations ahead, but firstly, to my kids. Me and Steph have talked about this hundreds and hundreds of times, where it's like the most important thing to us is that our kids know Jesus and that they live a life like that. That's it. It's like number one thing that we base everything off. Do we fail in lots of regards? And probably counter to that happening sometimes with many of our decisions, perhaps. But our, our ultimate dream, living the dream to us really, is living the meme so that they can pick up the meme and live the meme themselves. <laughs> My dream is for them to carry the meme to their kids. The meme that is Jesus. That is my actual living the dream. It's my grandkids knowing Christ. Hopefully, we've got a few years before <laughs> that comes about. And so when I reflect upon it, my actual dream is less about me and more about the meme. And that's not to take away from the power that is that our lives are the, are the meme that make Christ known. So your life is that vehicle. Great, yeah, we've got scripture that will go down the generations and do its thing, and, and it will be there forever. But part of that sharing of the meme, part of that multiplication, part of it going viral across the planet is our life. Our lives are the meme that make Christ known. And to spread the meme, you've got to live the meme. If we're actually going to spread the meme that is Christ, we've got to live the meme. And I mean in every bore, in every day life. You see, Jesus is the author, the original post. And your life and my life is now the reposting of that meme. He was the original post, and we're just the reposting of it into the future and out into our community. So I ask again, my bottom line, what is the meme of your life? What message are you spreading? When you actually really analyze it, and you think about the people in your world, what messages are they getting from you? What is the meme of your life? Because I want us all to reflect on what we're passing on. Considering the words we speak, the attitudes we have, the examples we set, the legacy we're, we're creating, all them things. I want us to reflect upon that and think to ourselves, what are we passing on? What am I in the middle of passing on? You know, I think it'd be good for us to take, you know, I want to do it, take a moment every day to, Ask God to let our life be a reflection of him. To imitate him, to share him, to repost him. For you guys who post a lot on Facebook, <laughs> maybe take that time to, to examine how you might post in your life the meme that is Jesus. So what's the meme of your life?
And if it is indeed Jesus, which I know for many of you it is, I encourage you to keep living the meat. Amen? Let's pray. Lord, I just...